When anyone proposes reducing prescription drug prices, like Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders recently have, the most common criticism is that it would hurt innovation. But not all pharmaceutical innovation is valuable. Some drugs are breakthroughs, but some offer only marginal benefits at exorbitant costs. There might be ways to keep prices low while encouraging drug companies to innovate. Look to Europe and elsewhere, where drug prices are a fraction of those in the United States. That's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. Special thanks to my colleague Austin Fracht, who wrote the Upshot column that this episode was adapted from. Germany, Spain, Italy, and a half dozen other countries have pushed drug prices lower with something called reference pricing. It's led to drug price decreases and significant savings in the Canadian province of British Columbia and in Germany, Italy, Norway, Spain, and Sweden. A study published in the American Journal of Managed Care found that price reductions ranged from 7 to 24 percent. Here's how it works. Drugs are grouped into classes according to therapeutic effects. For example, all brands of ibuprofen would be in the same class because they contain the same active agent. The class could include other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents like aspirin and naproxen because they're therapeutically similar. The insurer pays only one amount, called the reference price, for any drug in a class. A drug company can set the price of each drug higher, and if a consumer wants that one, he or she can pay the difference. Setting the reference price low enough puts considerable pressure on drug manufacturers to reduce prices for drugs for which there are good substitutes. If they don't lower their prices, consumers will switch to the cheaper products. In British Columbia, and in Italy, the reference price is set at the lowest price drug in the class. Germany uses an average price across drugs. Spain also uses an average, but only of the lowest price products that account for at least 20% of the class's market. And reference pricing doesn't suppress innovation, it encourages a different form of it. The market still rewards the invention of a cutting edge drug with novel therapeutic effects. New drugs might be placed in a new class and therefore could be priced high. But within classes, the market also rewards innovations that lead to lower priced drugs because consumers switch to them to avoid out of pocket costs. So reference pricing promotes cost effectiveness. For example, the price of a new anti-cholesterol drug known as PCSK9 inhibitors costs about $14,000 a year. A recent report from the Institute for Clinical and Economic Review, or ICER, received considerable attention when it argued that the drugs were priced too high for the value they offered patients. Reducing the prices to close to $2,000 would make them both cost effective and would help keep American health spending below a widely accepted growth target, according to ICER's analysis. Reference pricing could help drive down the prices of the PCSK9 inhibitors if they were put into the same therapeutic class as other cheaper generic cholesterol drugs like statins. If this happened, PCSK9 manufacturers, Amgen and Regeneron Pharmaceuticals, would face powerful incentives to reduce their prices. Now, some people might reasonably argue that PCSK9 inhibitors are better than statins and shouldn't be grouped with them. Because ICER's price is based on cost effectiveness, it incorporates such performance differences by recommending a higher price for more effective drugs, though in the case of PCSK9s, a lower price than the manufacturers may want. The promise of reference pricing goes beyond prescription drugs. In a paper presented at Brookings a couple months ago, the Harvard economist Amitabh Chandra, the University of Michigan law professor Nicholas Bagley, and and my colleague Austin Frack proposed extending the approach to a wider range of medical technologies. They suggested that Medicare should pay more for a new therapy for a given condition only if that new therapy is better than existing therapies. In 2010, David Leonhardt, my old editor at The Upshot, wrote about a similar idea. In no case, they proposed, should Medicare pay more for a therapy than a generally accepted cost-effectiveness standard. If patients wanted cost-ineffective therapies, they can pay the difference out of pocket, which is a departure from current Medicare policy. As it stands, other countries are far ahead of the United States in pricing drug to promote cost-effective pharmaceutical innovation. But interest is growing here in new approaches. Peter Bach, a physician at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, recently proposed a variation on reference pricing that considers how the cost effectiveness of a cancer drug varies by what disease it is used to treat. He noted that the drug Tarseva costs the same whether it's used to treat patients with a kind of lung cancer or patients with pancreatic cancer, but the results are wildly different. On average, Tarseva extends a lung cancer patient's life by just over three months. It extends a typical pancreatic cancer patient's life by a mere week and a half. Dr. Bach's insight is that we should be paying for what we care about, life gained, 
not the drug itself. He therefore proposed that the price of Tarseva be sharply reduced for pancreatic cancer patients to bring the cost per duration of life gained in line with that of lung cancer patients. Critics of Dr. Bach's ideas, Austin and colleagues' ideas, and the approach of ICER claim that they would restrain innovation that could benefit patients. However, they're devised specifically to reward smarter innovation, which is precisely what we need. Healthcare Triage is supported in part by viewers like you through Patreon.com, a service that allows you to support the show through a monthly donation. We'd especially like to thank our research associate, Joe Sevitz, and our Surgeon Admiral, Sam. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Sam. More information can be found at Patreon.com slash Healthcare Triage.